Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we'll pick up where we left off last time, where we did a titration of a, of a weak monoprotic acid with a strong base. Let's do a weak polyprotic acid with a strong base. So uh, as our working example, let's titrate 0.1 molar vitamin C, which is a diprotic acid, uh, with 0.1 molar NaOH. So for convenience, we have the same concentration, and this is the same numbers we've been using before. So I'm going to skip a few steps through here, uh, just because it gets to be a rather long calculation, and it's repetitive of stuff we did last time. Uh, because it's diprotic, we have two Ka's, and we have two reactions to deal with. A reaction where vitamin C loses one proton, and then where the vitamins, the the singly deprotonated vitamin C loses a second one and becomes doubly deprotonated. So the Ka1 associated with this action reaction and the Ka2 is associated with that reaction. Now there are going to be two equivalence points. There's going to be when we add exactly the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide to react with the vitamin C. That will take us to the first equivalence point, which will be uh, this. And again, as before, we are getting away with an approximation here. Because these Ka's are so different, we can think of these as two separated reactions. Now if these were closer, then we'd have a what's called a complex equilibria situation, and it would be much more difficult. But at this level, at our sort of general chemistry level, we will um, always have this situation. Okay, so um, after the first equivalent, then we'll have created all this. And then after the second equivalent, we'll have created all that. So what we're going to do is slam this over, and then to the, to the singly deprotonated, then let it come back, give us the pH of the first equivalence point. Then we're going to slam it all the way over to equivalence, and have that fully deprotonated vitamin C come back and give us the pH of the um, second equivalence point. Okay. All right. So uh, again, going to kind of eliminate some steps here. Um, so make sure you felt really comfortable with the previous lecture and um, go back and watch that video if you're uh, if you lose it along the way here at all. So our first job, let's figure out the total number of moles of vitamin C. At the first equivalent point, we'll have added exactly that many moles of sodium hydroxide. And because of our choice here, uh, it happens to be 25 milliliters. If this was something else, we'd have to figure out what, what volume that was. So our total volume at this point inside the flask with the analyte and the delivered titrant, we are at 50 milliliters. And so number of moles over 50 milliliters, this is going to give us our concentration of the fully deprotonated, right? Because this is how much vitamin C, it's all reacted. And so this is the molarity of that. Now, here's, a, here's something too that you might be thinking of, and it is confusing and it's a case where this approximation actually makes things a little bit more confusing. Um, so we are sort of allowing ourselves to think of one reaction at a time. Now we've created this. This guy is in this reaction and this reaction. So how do we know which one it does? How do we know it doesn't just go further? And it certainly does. But what we need to do is calculate the Kb here. And we get a Kb of 10 to the minus 10, which is very small, but it's still much bigger than the Ka. So when alone in, in the solution, this reaction will dominate over this, and we'll go back this way. So we need to use the Kb for the backwards reaction here, rather than the Ka2 for the forward reaction here. And that's because of their relative sizes. Okay, um, so let's set up the ice chart for this reaction. And this reaction going backwards, so we have our deprotonated, then we'll um, add, add to water, pick up, a, pick up a proton, create vitamin C, and leave behind OH-. Here's what we're starting with. 
Here's our ice chart. And then we can calculate our OH concentration because that's just going to be X. And then take the negative log of that. 14 minus that will give us a pH of 8.4. And just like with the monoprotic acid, it's a weak acid with a strong base. We expect that we will be slightly basic uh, at the equivalence point. All right, then we keep adding uh, base. And uh, again, we're gonna kind of skip those steps. It's very similar to the full analysis we did with the monoprotic acid. And we make our way to endpoint two. Now we have added 50 milliliters and exactly twice the number of moles of uh, sodium hydroxide. Well, what has it created? It has now pushed everything over. So our original 0.0025 moles of vitamin C have become 0.0025 moles of uh, the fully deprotonated vitamin C. The total volume is 75 milliliters now, and so that changes our molarity a little bit. We're more dilute, um, but we can figure that out pretty easily. Now this reaction, there's only one way for this to go, that's back this way, so we don't have to think about that. We're going to need the Kb2, so Kw over Ka2, and we get a pretty strong actually Kb. So the, the fully conjugated base is um, fairly basic here. So we would expect a pretty high pH, and that's what's going to happen. So let's set up our ice chart. Uh, we're all fully deprotonated, zero, zero. We work our way back. We get a concentration of OH that's pretty high. Take negative log of that, subtract that from 14, and we get 12, uh, pH of 12. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, at the titration curve. So it's interesting here now, there's two breaks in the curve because there's two equivalence points. So we have this region, and then we get the first equivalence point, a rapid change through that first equivalent point. Then we level off again between, oh, about 26 mils and 49 mils of base added. And then we have a quick transition through the, uh, the um, equivalence point. Kind of bringing us back a little bit, this, is, uh, this region in here, Right. This is called the buffer region. This is in a region where uh, we're about 50-50 uh, of the conjugate acid conjugate base pair, which is ideal for the buffer. So on a titration curve, we can see the flat region being a buffer region, and then the steep region being that transition through the equivalence point. So it brings back some ideas of, of buffers with this. Uh, if we had phosphoric acid, tri, uh, a triprotic acid, we would see three breaks in our uh, titration curve. And they can get pretty close on top of each other when you have tri, triprotic acid. So sometimes it's even kind of hard to see the, the breaks. They're not as crystal clear as a monoprotic acid. All right, so that is uh, titrations of a polyprotic acid. Uh, the last titration thing we're going to do, which will be next time, is we're going to do something called a back titration. And um, this is a really important technique, so it's more of a technique, but it makes you think a little bit like a chemist. And uh, I think it's always important for when you're, when you're first learning this stuff to uh, make sure you can understand the back titration. If you can do that, then, um, then you're in good shape. So that'll be our last um, lecture on titration, and that's coming up next.